Hi, I'm Matthew Gore from lightandmatter.org. When I first installed a pre-release version of Photoshop CS6 several months ago, and used it for a few hours, I thought to myself, well that's a slick new interface, but it's still pretty much the same old Photoshop. But the more I started using the program and digging deeper into the features, the more impressed I was. There are literally thousands of important improvements in CS6. Some of them dramatic, some of them subtle, but all of them creating a much better user experience for those of us that spend so much time in front of the program. There are so many changes, in fact, that if this video were an hour long, I couldn't cover all of them. So I'm not going to try. I will keep this short. Um, what I'm going to do is focus on just a few of the main areas where changes are centered, and even there, just the ones that are geared towards photography, at least for the most part. But before I do any of that, let's take a look at the new interface, which is the most obvious difference at first glance. To start off with, of course, it's just darker. The idea there being to make the image that you're working on the center of attention. It ends up being reminiscent of Lightroom. And actually, if you press Control-K and bring up the Preferences dialog, go to the interface, um, you can see that there's actually a selection of different brightness schemes that you can use. And actually, I like the dark one quite a bit. Um, but really, they all look pretty good. I'm going to leave this on the darkest setting for now and just press OK. And if you're an Adobe Bridge user, like a lot of us are, especially designers, uh, you'll find the same thing is true in Bridge. You can open up the preferences and change the color scheme just the same way. But the interface isn't just darker, it is also streamlined. And one of the ways that Adobe has done that is by adding a properties panel, which is context dependent. So instead of having a different panel for each individual thing, uh, for example, if we go to an adjustment layer. Now the adjustment layer information comes up in the properties panel. Same thing is true if we go to a 3D layer, for example. <clears throat> Excuse me. The 3D uh, layer information comes up in the properties panel instead of a dedicated 3D panel. And since I'm talking about 3D, let me go ahead and just start talking about one of the major fundamental changes in Photoshop CS6. And that is its use of your graphics card's processor, commonly known as the GPU. Modern graphics cards usually have a substantial quantity of RAM, and also have one or more uh, very pow powerful processors to meet the needs of 3D gamers, for example. But Photoshop CS5 made very minimal use of that power. CS6 has turned that around completely, and now leverages the power of the GPU for a wide variety of functions, including things that seem really simple, but are really useful, like rich cursor menus. So for example, you see that as I drag my marquee tool, I get measurements of the width and height. And of course, I can change those from inches to pixels or centimeters or whatever units I want to be working with. But the GPU is also used in a lot more dramatic ways, especially in the filter menu. But um, to really show you the difference with Photoshop CS5, let me open up that program and give you an example of the difference. So here I am in Photoshop CS5, and uh, I have a sort of similar graphic up on the screen here, but suppose that I want to add a lighting effect to this background layer, which is just a plain uh, sheet of blue. 
I would normally go up to the filter menu, go to render, and choose lighting effects. And this is how I would adjust it. I can change the direction down here and, uh, and all of that, move it around. But I'm really limited to this tiny little preview window, which is pretty lame. Um, let me change this to an Omni. And as you can see, I can, uh, I can check out what it looks like here on this layer alone, but I can't really see what it's going to look like on the overall image until I apply it, and then it's, uh, it's all there. And now I'm back in Photoshop CS6 with the same image open. Again, with the background layer selected, I will go up to the Render Filter submenu here, choose Lighting Effects, and this is such a dramatic difference. Uh, I have real-time control, I have full-screen preview, and basically I can do the same things. I can move the thing around, I can change the quality of the light, here's the brightness and darkness in on this little ring here, um, scale, and of course you can change the same settings over here on the uh, right hand panel, and you can change spotlights or other presets as you see fit for your particular project, but um, again, this is something that you get to deal with real time, not just sort of choose some settings and then click OK and see how it looks on the entire composition. You get to work with all of it at once, which is really nice. And of course, once I find something that I like, I can just press OK, and I'm back here in full screen with that effect applied. But I think I said I was going to talk about photography, so let me open up a photo here and show you some of the photography-related filters. So one of them is Blur. Uh, there's this whole new Blur gallery. Let's take a look at Iris Blur. And as you can see here, uh, in the right-hand panel, you've got Field Blur, Iris Blur, which is what I have active, and then Tilt Shift. But um, on screen here, I have a full screen preview window, and it is nice and fast. Lens blur is similar, but it's incredibly slow. So, uh, and as you can see, I can change the amount of the blur with this center wheel. Uh, I can change the outer bounds of the blur and sort of the uh, inner boundary, which uh, is sort of the, the fade area. Here, I'll get these uh, poor characters that were passed out here in Central Park uh, sort of in focus while the background is now quite blurry. Uh, and of course, to apply that, you just press OK and that's that. And let me open another image here. And of course, the same thing is true of the other blurs. Tilt shift, for example. I can uh, pull in my bounding areas here of the tilt and very quickly and easily uh, drop in some kind of a faux tilt shift effect. Uh, it's always been pretty easy in Photoshop, but now it is even easier. And for those of you who do a lot of retouching, the Liquify tool is also now incredibly fast compared to 
the old version. The old version, when you would open the filter, it would tile the image, it would take a long time to load. Now it pops right open and it moves very quickly. So if you wanted to uh, push around some details, uh, maybe destroy the nose or whatever, um, very quick, very simple. It all happens in real time, and um, that's a, a huge advantage to having GPU accelerated uh, performance here. Let me use this image to show you a new tool in Photoshop, and that is the Content Aware Move tool. It is an automatic type tool, and with anything that's purely automatic, you're going to have sometimes when it works well and sometimes that it doesn't. But as you see, I am just drawing a line, drawing a selection around this elk. And now suppose I like the elk, but uh, I really want it to be over here somewhere. Well, I can just drag it here let go and give Photoshop a minute to uh, analyze the image. And there we have it. Given just a little bit of time, uh, Photoshop has uh, blended the borders here of my selection into the background uh, with varying degrees of success. It's not perfect in here. And filled in the area that it was moved from with content that it thinks looks fine. And most of it does. There are a couple of areas here that will need to be cleaned up. But that's a really nice, um, easy way to begin the process, if nothing else, of moving a uh, selection within your image. And as long as we're looking at the toolbar, the crop tool is not new but it does have new behavior. Now, instead of moving the crop selection around the image, you move the image underneath the crop area. So it's a lot more like Lightroom, actually. And just like Lightroom, you have a, a selection of different overlays that you can use. You can have a grid or uh, the golden ratio, or golden spiral, for that matter. That's hard to see on this image, but it is here. Uh, in any case, I usually use the rule of thirds, and I will put it back there. Another new major feature of Photoshop is that it is now a full-featured video editor. And if we take a look here in MiniBridge and open up a video file, you can see that not only do you have a timeline-based editor here at the bottom, which I could expand a little bit, uh, you have, of course, audio editing, and you can add crossfades and all of those sorts of effects. You can also add, over here in the uh, layers panel, you can add uh, all of the different effects to the videos that you would normally add to um, still images. This video is getting pretty long, and I've still only just barely scratched the surface of what's new in, in CS6. So I'm going to finish this off just by very briefly showing you the 3D engine of CS6, which is completely revamped. And the great thing about it is that it's actually simple to use now. Uh, in the old Photoshop CS5, of course, there was a 3D engine, and uh, it could be pretty powerful if you knew how to use it. But um, <laughs> maybe I just didn't have the patience for it, but I did play around with it and uh, pretty much gave up on it. Now, um, if, for example, I wanted to change this text layer, the CS5, into a 3D object, 
And I could do the same thing to any vector-based layer. There we go. Uh, I press the 3D button, and it is now extruded. I can uh, change that over here in the Properties panel. Um, I can change the field view. I can change the depth. Mm -hmm. Seem to have run into a little bit of a problem here. And one of the nice things about the new version of Photoshop CS6 uh, that has been going on in the background is that there is now background saving, auto-saving. So even though Photoshop <laughs> has just crashed, and this is clearly still in beta testing, um, there's a very good chance that I will be able to recover my work here because I have set this up to auto-save. So I just opened up Photoshop CS6 again. And as you can see, the image that I was working on is still here. Uh, this was open when I opened the program because, as I say, Photoshop has been saving my work in the background. Uh, back to this CS5 3D layer, I'm just going to extrude this again and see what happens. I can change the extrusion depth, first of all. Um, I can change the material and the properties of that, the bevel, all of these things that you can do in any good 3D engine. And as you see, uh, I can choose the specific properties below, and they show up in the Properties panel, and they can be edited. And in some of these, there are multiple windows to play with. So uh, as I say, the entire thing is nice and simple. You can simply click and move things around. If you want to change the lighting, you click on the little light icon, and you can drag the direction of the shadows. So uh, it's a very easy way to get into uh, getting 3D artwork into um, your images and uh, your own personal projects. So Photoshop CS6 is very powerful. Uh, and in fact, all of these new features are uh, <laughs> a lot more powerful than I've even hinted at. So um, I will be creating more videos like this in the future, and I will spend more time on specific features, and I really will get to all of those features that are related to photography. So until next time.